Hello and welcome, party people, to episode two of the Reactor Core. Um, this is going to be pr pretty sweet. We are going to be talking about Infinity War, and we are incredibly excited. My name is Kyle Springer, and along with me for the ride, I have... It's Melissa Wilkinson! Hell yes. This is going to be a lot of fun. You saw this movie last night. Yes, I, I saw, saw it, it Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And you sent me a message that just said, be prepared. And as soon as I got out of the theater, I sent you I a message that said, I, I wasn't prepared, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> How do we want to tackle something like this? Do we want to, like, take it topic by topic? Kind of. So here's what I'm okay. th thinking. If, if anyone has stumbled upon this podcast or YouTube video without realizing that there will be spoilers. Let us warn you right now that there will be tons of spoilers. That is the whole point of this this mm -hmm. podcast. Um, so if, if, if you want absolutely no spoilers, you might want to go watch the movie now and then come back. Um, but we are tr trying to get this up as soon as possible for everyone. Hopefully it's up either later tonight uh, which we are recording on the Saturday after the movie mm -hmm. has come out, uh, or uh, like Sunday morning, because um, we we want to get this out as soon as possible. But yes, I'm thinking I'm thinking start with just kind of general thoughts, and then we'll okay. kind of dive deeper and deeper in, and then I kind of want to save any speculation and theories of what's okay. going to happen until the end, because I know. Even with some of that stuff, people can consider that spoilers for Avengers Four, right? Yeah. When, when that happens, because they don't okay, they, they, they don't want to know anything, you know, of, of what mm -hmm. might happen. So. Yeah, we especially don't even know the title, which is bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still waiting on that, and I I have some theories, so we will save that for now. But, um. Yes. I, I'll I'll start off and say I am an emotional wreck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ten years in the making, like nineteen something f films. Yeah. I I, th I thought this was inc incredible. Yes. It was so. It executed exactly what it set out to do on yeah. all fronts. It was so flawlessly competent in just an, a mind blowing way. <laughs> yeah it um i i like it, it's one of those things because when when i went to go see civil war it was mm -hmm. i like i was super ex excited for it obviously but it was one of those things like having like after i got out of that m m movie i was like wow that was incredible but i don't really know if i could give that to just a random person who hasn't really kept up with the MCU yeah. and have them know what's going on because there was like 13 other films before it, you know? Yeah. Um, and this one, I think actually kind of works both ways. Like I, I, I think you can kind of hand this film to someone who's never seen a Marvel movie, which if that <laughs> person exists, show me yeah. that. <laughs> Because yeah. that you know, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think while you can watch it, that's definitely not the best way to have seen mm -hmm. this. There, there's so many emotional beats in in this f f f film that are it's nothing but emotional yeah, beats <laughs> that that either won't really mean anything to you if you haven't seen them. And I, I, I think that's that's kind of what this whole cinematic universe thing is all about, right? You need to watch all mm -hmm. of these things to make something like this matter as much as it does. Yes. <sighs> what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? So, <laughs> so speaking of Civil War, I rewatched it earlier this week. And I've really uh -huh. enjoyed Civil War. But like this time, which is my, I don't know, third or fourth viewing of it. Like, I felt like the action kind of went on a little bit longer than I really wanted to. And I'm not a huge action person. I like the back and forth, like the dialogue and things like that. And I was kind of like glazing over a little bit. 
And this movie had none of that. I feel like no scene went on longer than it should have. I feel like it was very well paced. And like I was anxious to get to see other characters, but just because I loved them as much as the characters I was seeing. Yeah. Like I don't... Like it'd be tough to pick like a favorite branch of this storyline. It might be the Guardians one. I do really love the Guardians. Okay. But it wasn't like when I was watching when I was watching Doctor Strange and Iron Man. I'm like, come on, dude, where's Rocket at? <laughs> they okay. balanced everyone out very well. Yes, I I I do think there like every, everyone got ample screen time mm-hmm. for the most p- p- part. There's a couple exceptions i'm like man i wish they had more of this guy um and, and I'll, I'll i'll get to that I- I- yeah. in a bit but i i find it inter- interesting that you say that you like the dialogue and you thought the action in civil war went on way too long and yet this film was non-stop <laughs> action like from the get-go oh, was just non-stop I, action i i think civil war like it's like, that wasn't something I felt the first time. I think it was just after watching it, like, four times that I'm like, I, Maybe. I've seen them punch each other already. Like, there's only so many times I can watch a punch, no matter how good the punch is. I could listen to, like, really great banter forever. Yeah. And I think this movie was very good about, especially because it's got such a huge cast and all of them are, like, new to each other or, like, they haven't seen each other in a long time. Everyone's always talking. Yeah. Like, I don't know, Spider-Man catching Mantis in the air, and he catches Drax, and he's like, I I've got you, you guys! I got you, too! <laughs> I don't remember what your names are right now, I'm sorry, but I've got you! <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a big feat. Did, did, did you by chance grow up watching the, uh... Why am I blanking on their names right now? The Justice League cartoons and Justice League Unlimited not really. My brother watched them, and I'd watch him, them with him occasionally, but I don't have very strong memories about them, no. So if you ever get the spare t- 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 time, go back and watch them, because they're amazing. But they're, they're mm. kind of like this, where they had a huge cast of characters, and like they, they knew how to give Batman his own screen t- 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 time, because they had Batman the Animated Series. They mm-hmm. knew how to give Superman his own screen time because they had Superman the animated series. Mm-hmm. But to give Batman and Superman and Green Lantern and Hawk Girl yeah. and, you know, whoever else, like, and, and Wonder Woman, you know, it like to do that all at once is a very, very difficult feat. And mm-hmm. I think they did a good job of that in Civil War, but then to amplify it even more, in yes. this, when you, you, add the guardians you add in you you know so many other people and Mm -hmm. new characters yes too you know we're gonna get to that (laughs) um so i yeah i i had a blast um Mm -hmm. i let me ask you this though before we get any further into the movie what was your experience like at the actual theater did you have a good (sighs) experience there I did. There's this theater that is not in my neighborhood. It's like a solid 30, 40 minutes drive away. But we go to it a lot because it is called The Galaxy. There you go. So we went to it for the first time. Like, oh, let's go see Guardians of the Galaxy here. Of course. The Galaxy, yeah. Yeah, we just keep going back to this one theater for like every sci-fi movie just to stay on theme. (laughs) And we're in the huge mega screen theater. We've got our, our dedicated reserved seats. There you go. The theater is packed. It was really fun. And I'll say one thing. I don't know if... I don't think I've said this on mic, but I'm from St. Louis. And so uh-huh. when Peter Quill mentions that he's from Missouri, everybody, like, cheers and, like, yeah! throws their arms up in the air. Was and that- whenever I saw... Guardians of the Galaxy 2, like, when Missouri, like, flashed across the screen, everybody in the theater was just applauding. Was that you that I saw on Twitter who posted the gif of Avatar, the last air No! Someone, someone else that I follow on Twitter had the same thing they're like i'm from missouri i'm you know i'm right there so when he's when he says i'm from missouri the whole yes! theater is just like yeah uh, and and specifically i'm not f- f- 
I'm not from Earth. I'm from Missouri. Um, <laughs> but but they they posted a gif of Avatar: The Last Airbender, mm-hmm. or it might have been Legend of Korra, um, when uh, when the Avatar comes to this little small town, and the people are freaking out, and this one yes. woman starts like foaming at the mouth and just like. Yes! Yes! I've seen know. this. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is just g- going wild. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so we had that moment together. And then, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but during the end credits, like, as soon as the movie ended, and soon as it was, like, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo, the uh-huh. whole audience is just, like, hissing at each other through gritted teeth, like, what are they doing? Or what's going to happen next? And what's the post credit sequence? Like, everyone is so tense, and there's such a fervor. Yeah. And I've never seen exactly that kind of energy in a theater before, where we're, like, mad. <laughs> we are, like, filled with anticipation, and we're riled up. Yeah. Yeah, um, it it was it, it was really funny for me because I went to the theater that's closest to me, and it's nothing sp- special. We we don't have reserve seats and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, the seats are actually terrible, <laughs> but, um, but it, uh, it's it's the closest theater to me. And I remember I, I talked about this with Paul on the first episode of the Reactor Core that we did for Black Panther. Yeah, um, how the experience of going to that. Theater theater was amazing because i i like i'm i mean i i live in richmond so it's a city that is predominantly black at at Mm. least from what i uh, uh, understand but you know so i'm i'm kind of surrounded by that all the time but then in such a concentrated space and to see everyone not only like in marvel shirts or cosplay but in Mm full-on african garb yeah that energy was amazing this didn't have it though i think i might have seen a i mean people were still in their like marvel shirts and in cosplay and stuff like that but it it was it was so much more a mixed bag of different types of people and stuff like that um and while everyone was still excited, there wasn't, at least for me, there wasn't that, like, I'm witnessing something really cool happening here. Like, I am in someone else's cultures, you know, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm getting to, 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 to witness that. This was j- just, like, this is ev- ev- everyone here, you know, which, yeah. which is still super neat, but it, it was, it was mm-hmm. just like, whoa, this is a very different vibe from Black <laughs> Panther. That's cool. I think I might have seen a couple pieces of African garb in my theater. And I think what might have been different about this movie is that Black Panther, we knew, was going to be a celebration. Just this big, vibrant roller coaster in Infinity War. You really say is a celebration. Yeah, Infinity War. Maybe more like a culmination. Yes, yes. (laughs) So, like, we're excited, but we're not joyous. We're very I mean, stressed out. I I mean we were like I've seen a bunch of memes go going around af- afterwards of like before seeing Infinity War. <laughs> afterwards, it's it's, it's th- th- like th- Thor or, or someone he's sitting there you know all happy and smiling and then afterwards he's just like straight faced and it's just like oh god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was that was an exhausting movie. It was, although I will say it didn't feel long. Like, that's what my friend said as soon as it ended. She's like, that was the fastest two and a half hours I've ever seen. It was like two and a half, two and 40 minutes, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just emotionally (laughs) exhausting. And it could have gone on for two more hours and I would have been totally fine. Absolutely. Well, we'll just have to do it next year when they marathon both of them together in the theaters. Cannot come fast enough. (sighs) Ugh. But yeah, so I, I I thought this movie was really really great. Um, mm-hmm. I think the pacing worked really well. I I don't know if I would say it's great pacing, only because it's nonstop action and there's you don't ever yeah. have a chance to catch your breath until afterwards, mm-hmm. and then you're just like, oh god, what do I do with myself? <laughs> 
I feel um, like they gave us enough breaks in that there were scenes that were just like two characters and they were quieter. Like a lot of the scenes between Thanos and Gamora kind of acted as like a break where it's like, okay, it's I, not eight people yelling at each other. I can see that. That makes sense. Yeah, it's a good good po- 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 point. Um, but yeah, yeah it's like, definitely I, not paced like any other movie I've seen. I I never felt like it dragged or stuff. And and, and even then, most m- 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 movies that I feel like are a drag, it's mm-hmm. usually in their second act. Yeah, and it's usually not until after I've seen the movie and it's kind of sunk in that I've been yeah. like. You know what? That they probably could have wrapped that up a lot sooner, or, or done yeah. something else. Um, unless the movie is just re- really bad, and I think the whole thing is a, <laughs> dr- a, dr- a drag, and I'm like, oh god, this is terrible. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, this I I don't think was the k- 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 case. It was paced really well, and we've mentioned that there was action basically nonstop. Yeah. But I I think on top of that, this movie like at its core has this strong emotional yes like en- engine that is making the whole thing move forward um mm-hmm. on on for for all of the characters cuz like we said this is kind of the culmination of everything that's been happening in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far yep um and i i i think in that term the standout character in the sense of like emotional stuff i think the standout characters are easily thanos iron man um and i i guess you could say i i I don't know if i would say captain america but i would put spider-man up there as well as maybe a runner-up I'd put Peter, Quill, and Gamora up there. There's, oh, sure. There's yes. two, yeah, two Peters in this movie. We yeah. also have two Steves, but nobody's calling Doctor Strange Steve. And they're all Steve. named Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so many Chrises! <laughs> but, um... Which but, Chris was your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> all of them. They are all yeah, Chris. Yeah, it's... It's tough to pick. <laughs> no, and uh, like I, 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 I think those were the standout like emotional characters. But then mm-hmm. I think just standout characters in general uh, to me was Thanos, Doctor Strange, and Thor. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I liked Doctor Strange's movie. I didn't think it was mm. amazing. I mean, it's still like it's still like the Marvel standard, where like all like they haven't had a bad movie yet. They're all great. No, it's just in comparison to some of them, they're you know just not as as good. And Doctor yeah. Strange's movie didn't really do anything for me, but I loved mm-hmm. him in 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 this. Yeah, I th- I thought he was fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. And I I mentioned this to someone else. I feel like he would make a great Hulk-like character in the MCU going forward in the sense, not, not, yes. not in the sense that he's, like, big and strong or anything, but, like, mm-hmm. in the sense that he doesn't get any more of his own movies, but that he's the yeah. character that just kind of shows up in everyone else's. I think that would be awesome, and I think he'd be perfect for that role. Yeah. Because he's just I would love to see him. Pop, it's pop, just the continual and, resource. Yeah, and just he's going to do something really strange and fucked up and everyone's going to be like, what is going on? <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> um, but, but yeah, and so I, 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 I think those characters were kind of the standout ones. I think for a lot of people, um, especially those who don't know Thanos and what he's mm-hmm. kind of about, I, you and I had the opportunity opportunity to read infinity gauntlet which mm-hmm. is one of the comics that this movie was pulling from we, we read that last week uh our episode on it is already out you guys can go yeah. listen to it right now um that's episode four of the review show uh as of recording this though everything is gonna be on one itunes feed so you can all find it in one place that might be changing very shortly uh so go look on our twitter uh, at the whatnots or on our website, which will 
be coming down the road very soon that is in the works, which will be the whatnots.com, but right now that leads you to something else. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, like we, we, we kind of knew what Thanos was about. And I, I think we, we, we knew some of his emotional beats and stuff like that. And what, like, I, I, I knew he was going to be a good villain. Yes. I didn't know he was going to be this good. Yeah, and I was really surprised. I thought we were going to get to see death in this movie, and we don't. But I kind of like that this is the movie about his role as a father, and maybe the next one's going to be the movie about his role as a lover. But maybe I, I, I might disagree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they're going to do the character of death, and I think if they did, oh, I think if they did, they should have used Hella. Oh, um, yeah. That that was my, like, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, mm-hmm. uh, that was my theory, that Thanos was in love with her, and that when she oh. c- 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 comes to Earth and then, like, gets beat, that's when she's mad and is like, hey, Thanos, fuck him up, you know? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, oh, that would have also been good. Yeah, and that didn't happen. But you, you know what? I think this is one of the rare occasions that I think the movie was better than the book. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think what they did with the character of Thanos and his kind of motivations, I, mm-hmm. I, I liked that a lot more than just him being this kind of like puppy dog guy. Like, oh, death, I love you. Yeah. Notice me, yeah. senpai. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and... and I, I, I think while that is still fine motivation for what he does in the comics, and I'm still inter- interested to see what he does and stuff like that, I, I liked this better. It, mm-hmm. I mean, it's... P- people always bring up Magneto when you yeah. t- talk about, like, compelling villains. Um, at least I say people always do at least in the comic book <laughs> world yeah for sure um they always bring up magneto because yes he's a villain but yeah he's made some very valid points and he's not mm-hmm. necessarily wrong yeah you know he's he might just be going about it in the wrong way mm-hmm. um and i think that's exactly what they did with thanos too like he has noble intentions. He thinks he's the good g- g- guy. He's wanting yeah. to actually help people. And from his p- perspective, yeah, the Avengers are the b- bad g- guys of this film. And yep. <laughs> he wins. And the he, good guys yeah. beat the bad g- guys, according to him. And that's why yeah. at the end, that end scene when he's on the farm, which they kind of pulled directly, t- t- you know, out of the comics when he's sitting there mm-hmm. on the farm almost that scene goes differently in the comics but yeah he sits dead down and he just has this content look on his face he's just like yeah. i'm done i'm i'm happy i'm proud of myself but i'm done i don't have to do that anymore mm-hmm. i'm satisfied yeah. and in his face yeah no show, show ahead like it like he was just oh, satisfied no. And his face had some reverence and, like, respect for the loss, but there's no regret at all. Yeah. And I wrote in my notes about the Infinity Gauntlet book that this is a Thanos with no tenderness. He's just a giant blowhard. He's yelling the whole time. This is a very tender Thanos in this movie. Yeah. Like, you can see how he's not a good dad, but he thinks he's a good dad, and you understand how he thinks that. He's, he's the, the tough love kind of yes. dad. Where mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, you actually weren't a good parent, but yeah, you kind of made Gamora what she is, and she's a survivor, and she knows how to survive, and she can take ca- care of herself, and that's a good thing. Mm. But you were still a dick, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And, like, when he throws her into that pit, which is heartbreaking, I was expecting him to just, I was expecting something very abrupt. I was expecting him to just, like, shove her and get it over with. Instead, he, and like, it's, it's a struggle. as gently as this giant man can, he, like, reaches out and he takes her arm and he kind of leads her along. And, like, he's, he's not good at it, but I think he knows what, like, love and kindness and tenderness is. 
Yeah. And he kind of makes an attempt towards it. Yeah, if 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 we're taking notes from the comics, yeah, he knows what love mm-hmm. kind of is. <laughs> Debatable, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, like I mean, he's not a stranger to that concept though. Is is mm-hmm. I, I I guess a more apt way of putting it. Yes. Um he might have some delusions of, of, about what it is or how to get it, you know, but uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I I I I saw that coming from a mile away. Um of of like oh, he's 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 going to kill yeah. kill her. Um, yeah, and like, and so I, I didn't really have any kind of empathy for him at that moment. As as much of a struggle as that was, for you know, mm-hmm. for him, for Gamora, and just seeing that, like, no, I don't want Gamora to die, you know. Um, yes. It, 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 like I like seeing him struggle with it. I was kind of like, okay, dude, really, mm-hmm. you know, like <laughs> single tear. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that was that was kind of the only thing that was I was just like yeah I don't know if I believe that I mean I I, mm-hmm. I guess overall I do but it's it's one of those things it's like okay I'll, I'll I'm I'm reluctant but I'll suspend my disbelief sure yeah uh, yeah that, so. I I had n- I could not see that entire scene coming I mean once we were in there I knew okay he's gonna throw her down into the pit and like prove his love for her as he is murdering her and about to destroy all of her friends. Like, yeah. once we started, I could see that's where it was going to end. But the entire scene, we're like, they go to this ghostly planet, and then out comes Red Skull. Yeah. And he's like, the, you got to throw someone in the pit to get the soul gem. Like, I, that was one I of saw the biggest, of oh shit, moments yes! in the theaters. Like... I, I, again, to get back to like my experience at the theater, people were cl- cl- clapping for everything. The <gasps> well, actually, back it up. The first trailer that played um, was, I think, the like Little Foot trailer. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It was some d- d- dumb one. Second one that comes on was Solo. Ah, um, and. People were talking through both of those opening tra- trailers, and then uh, Deadpool two, I think, was the next one, and everyone <laughs> shut up and was silent, and just like, let's watch this. But like Star Wars, no, no respect, <laughs> <laughs> no, no respect. People were talking, you know, like L- 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 Lando came on, and you saw the like, ah, you know, <laughs> and but then that was it, and. People got silent for for you know another Marvel film. Uh, the yes. movie started. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, when all the characters started showing up. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know when when Captain America first like steps out of the shadows, everyone's like. Wah! Yeah, I think I I did hear like tremors in our audience when he shows up and we does were, that. It we is were going wild. It was great. Uh, you know when when it's... they show Wak- Wak- Wakanda. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. It was fantastic. Um, and, and yeah, like it, it 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 like we just we had a whole bunch of those moments, but one of the biggest like oh shit was when Red yeah. Skull came on, and we're like. <laughs> what is happening what because yeah like, n- n- no one saw that coming no <laughs> like absolutely I was not no one expecting a shock like that in, in I... any of my theories or ones that i heard or read about no one even p- paid a single grain of salt to a thought <laughs> of red skull <laughs> like i knew this movie was going to be full of like cameos and things and like oh we're bringing back this older character who we haven't seen in a while like we're dragging out all these supporting players as part yeah. of this giant battle no no i did not think about red skull let me ask you this though <gasps> here was a thought that crossed my mind especially after reading the comic mm-hmm. do you think that's mephisto I thought that the Squidward guy was supposed to be Mephisto. Not, like, actually Mephisto, like, this is the MCU's devil, but, like, filling the same role as Mephisto. 
as, as he does in the Infinity Gauntlet comic. But yeah, I can kind of see Red Skull as a Mephisto. It'd be an in- t- interesting thing. I mean, I, I guess technically he's not because he said mm-hmm. what his role is. Like he is the guardian of that stone and like he's the one that will actually tell people how to get it mm-hmm. um and like that's his role that's the entirety of his role um mm-hmm. which is some ve- uh, uh, to to go back to the comics uh the J- 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 jim starlin's writing is very uh, we mentioned like very classical greek yeah. literature very thematic very mm-hmm. much plays on like dichotomies uh, you know of, I don't know I'm t- talking out of my ass here <laughs> but um but yeah like it it has this kind of grandiose classical feeling and I think just having red school show up in a role like that is very Jim Starlin of of, of yeah of just like the, there's really no other rhyme or reason for him other than that he is the guardian of this one stone and he will tell you how to get the stone and he just exists somewhere yeah. god knows where and that's it yeah that is mythic yeah to have somebody who just exists to guard something and not do anything else and they are like an old enemy resurrected now in a form of servitude to this magic object yes yeah, i mean just like the the like ferryman boat people men something that will take people across the river river sticks like that's yeah. their only job. That's what they do. They're yeah, he's their like taxi the, service. He's he's the Heimdall of the Soul Stone, I guess. Kind of, yeah. Poor Heimdall, <sighs> man. Fuck. Yeah. <sighs> Short stick in this film. Um, yeah, yeah. Lots, lots of brutal things. And I was talking with my friend. Like we imagine everyone that got turned into like crumbled up, crumbled up leaf dust. Mm-hmm. They're coming back, but like. Heimdall, Loki, maybe even Gamora, like they might well, be out. We'll get into that because yeah, there's there's some theories with that, but we'll save that for l- a little bit. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. The Ta- other talked about Red sh- Skull. <laughs> Go ahead. I- no, I th- was going to say the other, like, absolute shocking moment, like, I had no idea this was coming, was when Peter Dinklage shows up. That, yeah. <laughs> and he's a giant. I- yes, which is so funny. Amazing. I was like, like that is great. This whole, like, meta that, layer onto is, the entire thing. That was great. Um, and I knew Thor was going to get a new weapon because my brother works at a Toys R Us right now until the Toys R Us dies here in a matter of weeks, maybe months. And he had gotten spoiled from the toys. Like, there's a Stormbreaker toy in his store now, and he's like, well, I guess Mjolnir's gone and Thor's gonna go make this. Yeah. (laughs) So I knew that was happening, but, like, the details of how it was gonna happen, I had no idea. Yeah. I I love that Groot is part of it, though. Like, he told me, oh, yeah, it's this new weapon, it's got, like, a handle that looks like it's made out of branches and wood, and I could not put it together. Oh, that's Groot. Groot is I mean, part it's of still, this weapon. Like, even if that wasn't Groot, that's something mm. I expect to see in that, like, Norse kind of yeah. Yeah. weaponry of just, like, I'm, I'm going to mix metal and stone and wood, and it's going to mm-hmm. be fucking badass. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know if anybody else could have seen like the final design out of context for Stormbreaker and then be like, what if that wood is Groot though? <laughs> I mean, I I wouldn't put it past some people. Yeah. But um yeah, like so that that happened that was that was like a funny oh shit moment. It was like, wait, is that Yes. That is. Wait, he's a, <laughs> Yes. He is. <laughs> <laughs> So that that was inter- interesting. I will have to say the other big oh shit mm-hmm. moment, or more of an oh no moment, was Black Panther when he dies. Yeah, and it was just like, yes because you thought o- 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 Okoye was gonna be the one, and they did the old bait and mm-hmm. switch. And yeah, you, you don't even you see you, you don't even see most of it, but you see his arm go like when he like picks her up. 
and it just his arm goes and ev- everyone was like no how but dare at least you? Th- <laughs> i think that was the signal to me like okay this thing definitely cannot be permanent like i think the sure. first person to disappear is bucky and I'm like, oh, like the story could do a lot more with Bucky, but if this is the end and of Bucky, that I kind of get it. But like, you are not taking Chala at this point, so this has to be impermanent the entire thing. Yeah, and Spider Man too, you know. Uh, yeah, because they they both have <sighs> we'll get to that sequels, but we'll yeah we'll we'll get to that stuff. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, I would like to take a second and talk about, we talked a lot about, like, pacing. I want to talk about the tone in that this movie was somehow, like, the most tense and the most heartbreaking, but also one of the funniest Marvel movies. Yes. I feel like they used the humor, like, they used it at the appropriate times, and they did it really well. Like, I burst out laughing a couple times. As much as I love Thor Ragnarok, which I Mm -hmm. would say is probably the funniest movie yeah. maybe guardians one can be you know mm-hmm. put up there too or some people i'm sure big guardians was way funnier but mm-hmm. i i that was my one problem with thor ragnarok is that yeah i liked the comedy there was just too much of it mm. and i would have like there were t- times where you had this really emotional beat and you just kind of interrupted it with a fart j- joke you know yeah. it's like Come on, guys, you could have let that go for, like, a couple more seconds, you know, Mm -hmm. and let it sink in. But this, I I think, yeah, like you said, did a good good job. It it, it was mixed in really well. (laughs) And some of it was, like, joke joke stuff. Like, I love Star-Lord shouting, where is Gamora? And Tony Stark's like, who is Gamora? And the Drax <laughs> shouts, why is Gamora? Yeah. How do you but a lot better? of the comedy, Why is Gamora? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the comedy, the best stuff was Drax like the very character-based stuff. Drax is the best. But I, I love when Peter Parker tries to introduce himself to Doctor Strange's cloak. Like holds a hand out and says, hi, We I'm haven't been Peter. formally in- introduced. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the character-based, like, comedy moments like that were so good in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Ned Leeds. Fucking Ned Leeds. N- yeah! Ned, Ned, I, I need you to make a, dis- a distraction. He looks out the window. Oh, God, we're all gonna die! <laughs> oh, Just God, like... and he's right, though. He's right, though. Ned could be turned to leaf dust also, as far as we know. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's so many characters that we don't know who are yeah. either alive or dead yet. Um, like Aunt May had better be okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm very protective of Aunt May. I Aunt May in the comics needs to just get done with it, <laughs> get it over with. She's I died can see once. That. We 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 t- t- talked about the whole one yeah. more day 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 one mm-hmm. more day thing, but it's just. Man, yeah. Yeah. So I, I can I'm definitely not... see that in the comics, but I like the current MCU Aunt May is a favorite of mine. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it, the, I, I think the comedy was used really well because it, it was mm-hmm. it was a mix of everyone's comedy. It wasn't just Drax's comedy the entire movie. You know, like mm-hmm. you had a little bit of that. You had a little bit of yeah. Peter's. You had a little bit of Peter Quill's. You had a little yeah. bit. You know, you had a little. bit bit of tony stark um and then you had the the like you, you mix that in with the seriousness of captain america mm-hmm. of thor of yeah. uh, of falcon you know of all of them you know and it works really well and that is an incredible feat to have that many characters mm-hmm. to all get really awesome moments and moments you didn't even know you wanted to right yes like the the like team up with Black Widow and Okoye as as they're yes! hiding. I don't even remember oh. her. I think that, which, I'm not sure which of the, the Thanos' four horsemen um, were which. I know one is named Ebony Maw. One is, mm-hmm. uh, god damn it, Proxima. I think Proxima Midnight is the one that they fought. That's the female one. Yeah, that um, sounds like a name. Um, but yeah, like when when uh, who who are they about to who is she about to kill? Scarlet Witch. Yeah, Scarlet Witch, who and she's like, "Now I got you alone." Also. 
and and then she's like she's not alone in black <laughs> like that moment is awesome and i never knew i wanted that and yes. i saw it i was like this is amazing this is exactly <sighs> what i wanted um, and <laughs> The, it, the movie gave me a lot of things that I wanted, and then when it gave it to me, I'm like, oh, oh no, I was bad to ask for this. Like, do you know in Ghostbusters when... Have you heard of this really old movie called Ghostbusters? <laughs> <laughs> when the mo- this really old movie called Aliens? <laughs> when they're asked, choose the form of your destructor, and then Ray's like, I didn't know, I tried to clear my mind, and then I thought of, like, the purest thing I could think of, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. He'd never hurt us, and then he definitely hurts them. Like, this is how I felt. Because I'm sitting there at the beginning of the movie when, like, there's Iron Man, and he's giving Spider-Man his new suit, and they're all fun, and I'm like, oh, it looks like Peter just really wants a hug from Tony. And then I get it at the end, and I'm crying, and I'm like, I chose the form of my own destruction. I did this to me. Yeah, like, like, and I, I also went in. I set myself like, up oh. for this one. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that was, I think, the most heart wrenching part, Mister Stark. I don't feel so good. That oh. that that got me. Yeah. That part. Um, I also wanted more Wanda and Vision out of this movie because I like that relationship a lot, and uh, like. To have, like, a big climactic moment of this movie hinge on their relationship to each other. It's like, I feel fulfilled and also deeply terrible. (laughs) Yeah. So, I, side note here, um, Vision and Scarlet Witch, yes, their kind of relationship is a very important Mm -hmm. one in the comics. Though it doesn't last no. They eventually kind of go their separate ways. And there was a recent run on the character of Vision, a 12-issue mm-hmm. miniseries written by Tom King. Yeah. Um, the, the, we did an episode on it, Paul and I, when our like book club-style podcast, which is now called The Review Show. But when that mm-hmm. used to be c- c- called the Whatnots podcast, uh, we did an episode on the vision. And I'm mm-hmm. showing you on camera, um, but this uh, is it. Ooh, uh, this that's is a the, handsome book. This is the hardcover. But yeah, so he ends up having his own, like, I forget exactly what he is. I know he's not a robot exactly, but he ends up having mm-hmm. his own, like, robot wife and kids. Yeah, um, I remember seeing, like, that cover around i was like vaguely familiar with the vision title and it's really good um i I, i'd say one of my favorite comics that i've ever Mm -hmm. read holy shit nice just dropped it um (laughs) not so nice um but no it's it's uh it's the pitch is like what it like it's it's breaking bad but for (gasps) the vision Oh. So he, like, something happens that he's not supposed to do, and he just digs himself deeper and deeper and deeper into this hole, and he's just like, oh, shit, wow. what do I do? Fuck. What, what do I do? Fuck. Um, so it's it's really good. I highly recommend it. Yeah, but, I'll have to um, check that out sometime. But, yeah, but, so, I mean, like, I can see that, especially since we don't know what's going to happen going forward in the MCU. I could mm-hmm. even see them exploring something like that. To, to yeah, if they yeah. end up resurrect because he didn't turn to dust. His body is still there. It's just deactivated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they like bring him back, right? He has to kind of deal with everything that happens. Yes. But then if they try and make him more normal, like if he's like, okay, guy, like I'm you know done with the Avengers. Mm-hmm. I just kind of want to live a normal life. And so they help him out. It's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll give you a wife and two kids, you know? Um, mm. And that way you can, you know, live this quote unquote normal human life. And that's a lot about what the book is about too. Like, what does it mean to be human and normal? Um, mm-hmm. And like, is it normal to have, problems and stuff like that and so oh. he, so it's 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 kind of like i i would kind of like to see something like that for that character moving forward but that's just a, a big side note i digress yeah. though yeah um, <laughs> while we're kind of on this topic i would like to talk about all the romance in this movie 
Which I think we got just because it is so many different characters and their relationships all put together. It's it it's kind of just more one-liners, I felt like. Like, we, mm-hmm. we see Iron Man and Pepper, right? Yeah. We see, uh, like you said, Vision and Scarlet Witch. I think that's mm-hmm. the one we get the most of. Yeah, and but uh, Star-Lord and Gamora, I think, I really liked... I mean, I liked it in that it hurt very much, that part of the I, movie. I, I think that's the one where we got the most progress. Yes! Yes! Like, I wasn't expecting them to get to I love you within half an hour of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and so. the part... I it, This might be, like, one of my favorite moments in this film when she tells him, swear on your mom. Yeah. Because I love the continuing relationship with Peter and his memories of his mother and, like, how she recognizes that and how he says, yes, if I made this promise on my mom, I, I have to keep it. Yeah. And that he trusts Gamora so much that he's like, this sounds insane to me, but if you told me this is what we have to do and you brought in, like, the most important thing to me to make me swear on, I will do it. Yeah. <gasps> So that that was rough, and then when he finds out that she, she's dead, he just goes nuts. Yes! Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking Very stuff. much. Ugh. Um, I, 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 f- I feel like that's kind of all I have to say about the film. It's... Oh, I have a lot to say about it, just Go in for general. It. Oh, like, just the end, like... I like how this crept into horror, kind of. Almost. Like, yeah, like with the beginning with that giant spinning space donut coming down on the city. That's, like, very tense in a way I don't think any other, like, natural, like, not natural disaster, but, like, big sci-fi space disaster has been. Like, that felt more frightening than, like, either the two Avengers movies or anything else where there's, like, giant citywide destruction. Just this big, weird spinning wheel in the sky. Like, what does that mean? I think the way that they... Because, obviously, again, stuff like Civil War had big, bombastic action yeah, like that. Yeah. Even Avengers 1 had the mm-hmm. a- aliens flying all over New York, you know, and they're huge. Um, yeah. And I think, I think they got it better with Civil War, but I think this really showed... Because I, I think, and I sound like I'm rambling now, but... I think the scene that really hit me for, wow, they, they're they showing the destruction and the chaos really, really mm-hmm. well, was actually yes. the end credit scene with Nick Fury yes! and Agent yes! Hill. Yes, that too. The, the, when the helicopter kind of is like spinning out and c- c- crashes into the building, I I really got 9-11 oh, vibes. Yeah. And then thinking about that through the entire film of just... yes. Like Tony Stark at the start walking out of the Sanctum Sanctorum, and he's just seeing people running by, and they're go- 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 going both directions. Like it's not, yeah. uh, no one knows what to do. Yes, it's like, do I run that way or this way? Some pe- 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 people are go- 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 going one way. Some are go- 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 going that way. Like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. And I, I think they really nailed that. Yeah. And the turning into leaf dust. It reminds me of like when you get when you see a leaf on the ground in the fall that has been stepped on so many times it's, it's just, just like yeah. tiny particles. Yeah. I when everybody did that, like I did not see that effect coming cuz in the comic book don't they just like vanish? They just yeah. like vorp out of yep. existence. Bam. Yeah. And this is so much worse and just the way like everything's slightly to be able different. To see it happen, yeah. In, 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 yeah instead of it just, it's there one second, and then you know, next it's not. Yeah, and like some people, like Bucky's last word is Steve. Rhodey doesn't know where Sam went. He thinks he just can't and see. Almost Sam. steps on him. Yeah. Yeah, and like Wanda looks relieved when she crumbles into non-existence, which is heartbreaking. She, I mean, she yeah, but she also is kind of the goth kid of the avengers she's the the witchy yeah. goth kid just like ah oh, yes finally yeah. death 
Like, that was the most brutal ending to a movie I think I've ever seen. And, like, you well, you know that's not how... This is impermanent, like I said, but it hurts so bad to watch it. And it's something you're not expecting. Yeah. Like, if, if, if half the MCU was going to die, I would have thought it would have been something like they just vanish or, like... There's a, a cataclysm, like, oh, they're they're trapped in a destruction or something like that. Something physical, something environmental. But to have them just evaporate out of the landscape and everything around them is perfectly intact is very visceral. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I was expecting Captain America to die. I was expecting <sighs> uh, Tony Stark to die mm, yes yes i was expecting um i was c- expecting vision to die uh mm-hmm. i didn't know who but i was expecting someone from the guardians of the gate of the gay galaxy yeah. not all of them uh, except for r- 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 rocket yeah. um like i the ones i were expecting to stay alive was bucky Black Panther mm. and spider man those are the three that i knew <laughs> like, <laughs> which and 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 for for people who don't go see any spoilers Uh like i'm sure that was one a huge surprise but then they also don't know what's coming up necessarily yeah um which is kind of the downside for me i i know a little bit more about what's coming Mm up so i you know when they kill off spider-man when they kill off bucky and they kill off uh black panther i'm like okay i know that's not gonna stick yeah yeah so i mean it's still like it was like there there was a woman but in the row behind me and a couple seats down last third of that film just audibly crying just sobbing yeah yeah and it's rough yeah and i like i could tell she loves these movies but she has no idea like what's gonna happen down the road mm-hmm. that like hey black P- panther actually has a sequel confirmed that's taking mm-hmm. p- 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 place after these events you know um so does spider-man you know like because mm-hmm. I, I, at one point like i, I forget who it had but like, you heard her say what is happening you know like she, she yeah. was distraught mm-hmm. and i was just like man to like to be like if if like on, on one hand i kind of wanted to be in her shoes to not know and just all of this is yeah. new and it's just what in the world you know but i'm i'm all, like i don't mind spoilers all that much mm-hmm. you, you know so it's just like i kind of want to know uh, you know and i've i kind of know the comics a little bit too so i already mm-hmm. kind of know what's what's gonna happen but not really uh, and so it, like it, but that that puts me in a totally different space where it's 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 like they can kind of play on my expectations and stuff like that of of what you know just because there's a black panther movie coming up there is precedent for shuri being the black (gasps) panther oh yes uh there 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 was a a not super long but there was a run where uh where he is missing he's gone and shuri takes up the mantle because she is the Mm -hmm. next in line yeah Um, yeah so like you know something like that wouldn't necessarily surprise me but i i don't expect that Mm -hmm. you know um so yeah there's all all sorts of things they could do yeah like i knew this was going to be full of deaths whether or not they are permanent right yeah i wasn't expecting who ended up disappearing i will say i mean we don't hawkeye wasn't in this we don't know what his status is but i kind of like that if he's okay we've got like the original shawarma six still around for the final avengers which i love this whole community i love everybody coming together but the bookend of it being the six of them i kind of like that yeah i i didn't put that together that the original mm-hmm. six are, are still there mm-hmm. that's cool yeah yeah i, I think like that, that. I, I think that'll be fun fun i say in quotation in, marks in this quotes. movie like this <laughs> this was a, an emotional roller coaster but i did 
Like, I'm glad it's doing this to me. Like, this isn't something I've come to expect out of, like, yep. superhero popcorn movies that are just fun and have, like, very touching moments. But, like, oh, this is brutal. And it's, like, exciting how brutal it is. Yeah, eat that, James Cameron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, like, I... Uh, I don't know, man. It's It's... They're, they're doing some awesome stuff. Yeah. Do we want to get into theories? Yes, I do want to okay. get into theories. Okay. Where so do you want to start? I, I want to hear yours first. Okay. I... So I am subscribed to, on Spotify, there's the official Guardians of the Galaxy combined soundtrack put out by, like, Disney's Hollywood Records brand. Sure. And it's... All the songs from the first two movies, plus the score tracks. Like, I've got it saved. I'll go back and listen to this thing every couple weeks or something. It's a soundtrack I like. Cool. And I was listening to it yesterday, and two brand new songs were on it. Which surprised me. And it's The Rubber Band Man, which we heard. In like, that's the one. song playing yeah. when, like, Peter first shows up flying his spaceship. And then it's also Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, which is not in this movie. Interesting. And so I've got a mystery to figure out if, like, this was tied to a scene and they ended up cutting it. What does it mean? Why is this in here? But so I listen to Rubber Band was, Man and I start. Was huh? that not in a in the movies yeah, before? It's, it's I yeah, no, I, no, I, I, have, I don't think it's in them. I could be completely wrong. But for like, I, I mean, I, I guess with what they do with their sound tracks i i can easily see that song being in there so maybe i'm just yeah. ca- kind of making up like i vaguely remember it being in one of the movies same like i'm like 90 percent sure it wasn't but like it easily could be i don't know and it's so famously tied don't to Shaun of the dead like i can't yeah <laughs> like would it be in any other modern movie i don't know but so i was listening to the rubber band man song and i'm like you know what a rubber band does it stretches out, and then it goes back to exactly what it was at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is like just a fun, poppy, very Guardians of the Galaxy style song to put over when, you know, like, they first hey, show up in the film. don't worry, because Guardians 3 is also coming. Yeah, yeah, but it like it means something. Like, we're going to snap back. Which is and now like, Maybe... retitled the Rocket movie. <laughs> <laughs> the Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> Rocket and friends. It's just Rocket and Craglin. The Rocket whole time. and Groot. Yeah. It's two Sean guns. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, oh, this feels almost prophetic. Like, when Adam Warlock arrives on the scene to help solve this problem, is he the rubber band man? Who knows? Is the soundtrack foretelling his appearance and i was disappointed we didn't get to see in any form adam warlock in this movie i was really looking forward to him and now i have to wait a year i, I can kind of see them not putting him mm. in there uh, especially since they didn't put death in there in in, in, so. in the like physical manifestation <laughs> version they, they mm. had a lot of de- 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 death in in, in this yeah. film but um yeah so 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 you're you're expecting maybe a, a character maybe adam warlock maybe someone like him or filling yeah, that a role doctor to, strange could do to this to bring back some of the characters yeah it's gonna be rubber banded which I, I guess you knew like to begin with like of course not all of this is going to be permanent but yeah there's gonna be a cosmic time space snap back and with that time stone, I'm really intrigued by whatever it is they're going to do with that. Yeah, and whatever like what Doctor its Strange's limitations are. end game yeah. is. Yeah, he was hinting at something, yeah. and we don't know what it is yet. It might be, like, I really did like what Infinity Gauntlet did, where Thanos realizes he no longer is bound to his physical body, and he becomes made out of star stuff, and then somebody realizes... Oh, the Wait, gauntlet is just sitting on an... Yeah, <laughs> I can just take that... Yeah, it's Scoop. on an unembodied husk that isn't going to put up any resistance. Yoink! Yeah. Now it's me. I'm the most powerful. Yeah, I I think Nebula is definitely going to be a major player. Yes. Uh, in Avengers 
four, it's very p- p- possible that she does something. Because, mm-hmm. um, again, if you've read the comics, that's mm-hmm. that's basically what she does. As you mentioned, Thanos goes to that, like, husk thing, and he's like, you know yeah. what, I don't really need this body, because it's like, I'm basically God, so what do I need a body mm-hmm. for? And then he just leaves his body, and Nebula mm-hmm. is standing right there, and is like, you know what, I could just... I'm gonna take that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna reset now. everything. Um, yeah. So here, here's I, I guess my question to you: Do you feel like having it be reset would cheapen the experience, though? Ah, uh, I don't think so because that's just how comics work. Like I think even if you don't read comics. Like, my 62-year-old suburban mother who has never picked up a comic, I think she still knows that's how comics work. It's one long continuous loop. Things happen. They get reset. Like, there's always restarts in just what this medium's context is. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I think I'm kind of expecting that, and, like, I don't mind it. Like, this is... It's comics. That's what they do. And this is just big, flashy comics up on a screen, and and of course you know this is a giant franchise all these actors they don't want to be in these things forever right so yeah i I expect there will be departures but i also expect and look forward to a lot of things rubber banding back to what they were and like i'm happy about that status quo like comics is a world where there are wrenches thrown into the system but there is some form of a status quo that is kept yeah yeah it's um I, I I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Yes, that is what comics do. There's a mm-hmm. revolving door all the time. I've I've mentioned to people like, oh yeah, I'm reading comics uh, from the late '80s to early '90s, right up to the storyline when Superman dies, and they're like, wait, what? Yeah, Superman <laughs> dies. Yeah, yeah. When, what? How is he back? What the? You, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's just like yeah, that happens. Like. It, Pretty much all your favorite ca- ca- characters have died at least mm-hmm. two or three times, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just what what happens. But at the same time, I think knowing how emotionally re- like taxing mm-hmm. and rewarding this film was, I like to to have it all be reset com- completely. I'm worried that like, well, then what was the point? of that you know like i know it won't be a hundred percent i'm expecting i mean yeah uh like a 30 to 75 percent reset yeah Yeah. um i mean it's not going to be like a complete reset Mm -hmm. where everyone is back and you know blah blah blah. um but it you know i yeah do you have any more theories um just that I think that that Tony and Pepper scene at the beginning where he's talking about how he dreamed that they had a kid. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, you know, we named the kid after your weird uncle. What's his name? And she says, yeah. Morgan. And I'm like, if this was just a joke, they would have picked a weirder name. The name Morgan is too, like, normal and solid sounding to be thrown away like this. Does that make sense? I like, guess so. Like, Morgan Stark is too good of a a comic book movie name to not be put to use and i like i can definitely see if he's not dead then tony stark definitely like i am i am officially retiring i cannot do this anymore i'm going to start a family and then like you know half a dozen movies from now then we've got morgan yeah yeah young baby morgan stark stepping up the game um i mean for his character in particular there hasn't really been anyone else to be Iron Man. However, th- more recently, there's a character named Riri Williams, um, who is this young little black girl, and oh. she basically makes her own Iron Man suit in her college dorm. Way to go! Yeah, and uh, she picks the name. She uh, what's her name? Ironheart, I think is her oh. name. Um, I don't read her 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 book, but it, you know, like there's precedents for other like Iron Man type characters. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I necessarily think we need to have one going forward, but yeah, you know. I'm happy with War Machine. Yeah, and, and even then, I don't imagine War Machine sticking around much longer. You know? Yeah. Um. 
So I I have some theories. Yes. That I I want to kind of t- talk about with you. I've been t- talking with a whole bunch of people in different like Discord channels that that I'm in and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And I was direct messaging a friend of mine on Twitter who was like, uh, "If anyone knows what the ending of that movie meant, let me know." And I was I was I was like, "I I I got you, dude." let me know ask away oh yeah and uh, when, when, <laughs> when that final frame of the movie shows up when it's the captain marvel logo on the weird little analog communicator <laughs> yeah basically a beeper there were a surprising oh, amount of people in the reaching. audience at my theater <laughs> that were like who's that what does that mean and i just mutter to myself yeah, and, half and the then, people in this theater think no he idea. just tried to call a holiday sweater and then the woman next to me laughed out loud because <laughs> it is if you don't know what it is it's just like blue and red and like a big star and like some zigzag lines and it's like he he called christmas i guess <laughs> he called the ghost of christmas past <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was surprised that my i didn't come from a nerdier theater like oh you guys you're, you're I mean, not yeah, up on captain marvel I, I, i'm sure that, like my theater was a mixed bag as well but in my head knowing what it was and seeing it i'm just like yes like i, yeah! like, I know what's happening i know what's I know, coming kind of uh you know of course they save her for the last second because like we all knew she was coming somehow yeah um yeah, I, I, I guess if you've made it this far and you still didn't understand the that end scene, uh, Nick Fury called Captain Marvel, who is a, another Marvel-related character, uh, who in short got her powers from an alien race called the Kree. Um, mm. I think there's been mention of the Kree in one of the Guardians films. Yeah, I think that's the first one. Yeah, that's Ronan the Accuser. He yes, either is he them or is hates them. I don't remember. Something like that. Yeah, we, we've heard yeah. mention of them, but we haven't really seen them. Uh, long story short, I think in the comics, like, her, like she's almost dying, and an alien mm-hmm. named Marvel, who is a Kree, this, someone misheard his name in, like, this is what happens in the comic. His name is uh-huh. Marvel. Someone mis pronounces it and says marvel and so mm. hence the name captain marvel and he's the first captain marvel um but then i think carol danvers who is the one we will see in the captain marvel film she ends mm-hmm. up getting hurt and he saves her by like donating his dna or something i, I don't know something like that so she has this like hybrid dna which gives her these incredible powers um and she is Captain Marvel. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see what happens with her. I don't really know much about her character. Yeah. Um, I know that... Well, so, so yeah. So he... Nick Fury calls her. We don't really know what's going to happen too much beyond that. We know some details yeah. about her film, which I'll mention in, ju- in just a sec. But... Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's Kevin Feige has said that um, that Captain Marvel will very quickly establish herself as the strongest character in the MCU. Um, sure, yeah, sure. Which you who know you know that might be semantics. You know, it's like yeah, she has really strong energy blasts, but it like is she really the like physically strongest? Is she, you know what, what yeah. does that exactly mean? You know. Yeah, um, and, like, there's characters like Doctor Strange that, like, yeah. maybe aren't as good of fighters, but, but they maybe, have this yeah. sort of temporal power. He's yeah, like a level 79 warlock, you know? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> magic space wizard, go get him! Um, <laughs> you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he, yeah, so we know she... If if you've been paying at- attention to kind of news and what interviews are saying and stuff like that, she is going to come and enter the picture, and I I don't want to say that she's going to solve it all, but she is going to yeah. come in and she's going to fuck some things up. Um, yes, and it's going to be awesome. But here's what we know about her movie so far: one, that it will take place in the '90s b- 
before the events of Iron Man 1. Two, that she is going to be fighting the Skrulls, which is another alien race, and they are shapeshifters. I don't think I heard about them. Okay, they're they're more famously known. Uh, I, I guess they they originated in the Fantastic Four comic. Okay. So it's it's one of those things like how exactly did you work it out to get them? Because you haven't really bought Fox yet, which they would be a Fox property if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Because X Men and Fantastic yeah. Four are both on Fox. Um, but yeah, they have said that she will be fighting the Scrolls, which are these shape shifting aliens um mm-hmm. why that's important for captain marvel is the kree and the scrolls hate each uh, 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 other and they've been at war yeah. for a long long time um and the kree kind of have a hive mind thing there's mm-hmm. there's a the, the the kree supreme intelligence uh so anyone or all the kree have has this have this like hive mind men- mentality um but there's a famous comic storyline that I have somewhere here on my shelf. Where can I find it? Where can I pull it out of thin air? Um, I will show you. You can't really see it too well on this. Okay. It's called Secret Invasion. Um, basically, the story is that the scrolls have been infiltrating Earth for years and kidnapping and replacing the heroes we know and love. Ah! And so the people who you actually thought was like Captain America or stuff like that are actually scrolls. Mm. Um, and they eventually find out and they're like, wait, okay, which one of you is an alien? Which one of you is real? And no one no, no, knows and stuff like that. But there's a big scene where all of the heroes kind of come back at the end, like the real, real, real ones. They, you know, they were all kidnapped and stuff. And so they eventually escape and come back to earth and they kick some ass. Um, but it's, so I, that's kind of another ingredient. Like, okay, that's going to be in play. We have Captain mm-hmm. Marvel. We have the Scrolls, and we know that Doctor Strange did some time travel stuff. And yeah. w- has, has, he said there was like fourteen million something. Like he saw, he watched Infinity War fourteen million times, <laughs> and he didn't he didn't give any spoilers. Um, <laughs> That was also an, an, another meme that, that I saw. Um, <laughs> but he, he, yeah, he has some kind of end game that he's playing for, which is why he was so ready to give up the time stone. He knows that mm-hmm. they kind of have to lose to win. You know, if yes. they lose, maybe that's what c- c- causes Nick Fury to call Captain Marvel, which if mm-hmm. Captain Marvel c- comes, you know, all this stuff. But we have to, like for this to work like captain marvel needs to be established in the mcu so my thought is what if instead of just going into the future to find all the timelines what if dr strange found the one that worked and briefly went into the past to like warn her or like set, set her up like we need your help talk to nick fury and she's like nick fury i know this guy like shit this must be real you know um yeah so i i'm i'm wondering if there's something going on like that maybe that's the end credits scene of like her film or something like that um because like you said there's this obvious reset that is Mm -hmm. going to happen but we don't know exactly how or you know what is going to happen after that um and there's precedence in the comics for Captain Marvel destroying the Tesseract. Mm. Which, if she does that, if she is, like, if her mission after her film is to go and destroy the Infinity Stones before they ever get into Thanos' hands, that would be neat and would change the timeline, right? Um, mm-hmm. But again, it's that c- 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 complicated thing. Like, do we really want it reset? Because the emotional stuff was so good. But if that didn't yeah. really matter, then you know, I, I don't know. But here's, um, he, as as I was thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? That might actually not be so bad. And here's why. Because yeah. if she goes back to World War II, 
with the help of like Nick Fury or Doctor Strange or whoever, if she goes yeah. back to World War II uh, and destroys the Tesseract, which was the in the first Infinity Stone that we saw, then mm-hmm. Red Skull will actually die. He won't become the guardian of the Soul Stone, which then mm-hmm. either means no one will know wh- 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 where to find it or how to get it. Yeah. Which c- c- kind of takes that one out of play. Also takes mm-hmm. the t- t- Tesseract out of p- p- play. But then maybe Steve won't have to put the plane in the ice. He can live with Peggy. Maybe he can take Peggy for the that dance. Oh. Maybe they can grow old together. Oh. And oh. without killing Captain America, maybe that's how they get him out of the picture, right? Yeah. If World War II ends a little differently, maybe Howard Stark stops making weapons. Maybe Tony Stark never has to make weapons. Maybe he's just a big tech guy. Yeah. Maybe he meets Pepper, they get married, and they have a kid because he never became Iron Man. Or yeah. maybe it's something else, like maybe he he did make the weapons, and what if he died in the cave? Oh, <laughs> you know, he can't die in the cave because then who makes Peter Parker his suit? Well, like he made his own suit, but well, it's not as good. That's the, that's that's the, the the thing there might, you know, with with the Infinity Stones and the reset, there can be all sorts of things because he mm-hmm. Peter Parker is an inventor like that is yeah. his thing. He's he's a big science nerd. Um, and, you know, in the comics, he makes his own suits and stuff like that. And they have like stealth tech and, you know things like that um but but yeah so like it, it'd be like there are ways to get these heroes the happy endings that would have that emotional payoff mm-hmm. that's yeah. like yeah like i, I want to see steve and peggy again like <laughs> that'd be amazing um yeah. you know and she can zip around space and time and save heimdall too yeah um <sighs> so there'd be stuff like that but that would take two of the infinity stones out of play Mm -hmm. maybe that's the the thing then where like well if the if the tesseract also wasn't in play maybe loki you know if they go to earth doesn't learn about the tesseract yeah doesn't then go to thanos after words to like let him know about the the stones and stuff like that so there's there's some kind of way that they can get around this because at first I, I was like, well, you know, do they only reset the events of Infinity War or do they go mm. farther back? You know? Yeah. So I, I I don't know exactly what'll happen there, but that's that's kind of my bet that that's that something is going to happen with Captain Marvel, the scrolls, uh, the Time Stone, and maybe Nebula. Yes. Um. Because also, like, what if everyone, at least in the Avengers, that got destroyed, you know, that got that died, mm-hmm. what if they were scrolls? <gasps> you know uh, what I mean? Like, and then all of the yeah. real heroes come back, like, sorry, we got k- kidnapped years ago, you know? We've all been in ice. Yeah. We've all been in caves. Yeah. <laughs> Captain... We know, we know what it was like now, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so like, like maybe instead of destroying the Infinity Stones, um, Captain Marvel sets it up so yeah that she saves these people by kind of kidnapping them and replacing them with sc- with scrolls somehow. I mean, she's c- kind of an enemy of the scrolls, so mm-hmm. I, you know, who, I I don't know if that would work. That might not work, but yeah, I don't know. I like that theory a lot. That sounds good. That sounds... That's an emotional payoff I'd be satisfied with. Because the creators, the, like, writers and directors and all that stuff have already said that Avengers 4 is going to be bigger and better than Infinity War. And that's, like, mind-boggling. Like, what do you mean bigger? What do you... What? Like, no. This this, this was, was like, $400 million to make. You know, like, uh, yeah, um, but I, 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 st- I still don't know what to expect. And you mentioned that they don't know what the title is going to, well, 
Yes, what are your they, ideas? They do know what the title is going to be, but they haven't told anyone yet. Originally, it was supposed to be Infinity War Part 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they kind of walked that back and was like, we're actually going to give it its own title, which yeah. makes me think that the title is kind of spoilery. Yes, yes. For people who know the comics and stuff like that, it's potentially spoilery. And, of course, once they say that, then it's like, oh, this is what's going to happen, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so something like Secret Invasion Ooh. would, one, it sounds dope. Uh, yes. And, like, because it, it, topping Infinity War, you know, like, you have to do something that sounds cool. Um, I, yeah. I, I heard someone else say, like, end g- g- game or aftermath, and I'm like, eh. But those are too general. The, yeah, it's way too general. Like, I feel like I've seen other movies called the exact same thing, you know. Um, but, 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 yeah, like, they have a habit of, like, we're doing this storyline or we're, we're, we're taking the idea of this storyline and taking the title of that and using that as like the core of our film. Um, so yes, I, I think something like Infinity War, I mean, uh, Secret Invasion yeah. would, would be like, my, you have my attention. <laughs> what, you yes. know, what is this? <sighs> what, what is the secret invasion you speak of? Um, uh, another one I thought of, actually, Eric Mannix mentioned it on our uh-huh. Infinity Gauntlet episode of the review show. Uh, that's out now. You guys can go check it out. Um, there, there's uh, another famous Avengers book called Avengers Forever. Huh. That I think might be kind of cool. And from what I understand, um, they probably wouldn't do much of what the actual story is about but from what what, what i hear there's some time travel involved and it's kind of about legacy and like the whole idea of like hey the avengers will always be here you know and so i think i think that kind of idea that kind of hopeful triumphant uh idea is kind of a good capstone to end this saga of yeah. what we know of the MCU so far. So something like Avengers Forever might be cool. I, I don't think it, you know, it's not as like, ooh, that sounds dope, you know, as as Secret yeah. Invasion. But I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. their their biggest movies so far have been like Civil War, Infinity War. They uh. also have a a comic called Secret War. Yes, I'm familiar with Secret War. Which, yeah, which was basically just a big toy commercial. Um, yep. But, like, I could see them kind of going with something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if yeah. that's, you know, really... Because that's the, the thing. So, actually, I do have one more question for you regarding uh-huh. Infinity War. Uh-huh. At the end of the film, when after Thanos snaps his fingers and we get that brief scene of him and Gamora, baby yeah. Go- Gamora in that like isolated, yeah. we, we don't even know where it is or what it is, uh, who would, you know, <laughs> how do you want better? Yeah. Why, Gamora? Why uh, is it? Um, and like, I, like Gamora asks him, what did it cost you? And he responds, everything. Yeah. What do you think he meant by that? Because on one hand, it's easy to say Gamora was his everything, right? That's why he was Mm -hmm. crying when he had to sacrifice her and stuff like that. And there's also a nice book, uh, like a nice callback to like when she's saying goodbye to Peter Quill and she says, I love you more than anything. That's kind of a, a parallel to the language she used. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like that's the easy, obvious response. But I mm-hmm. got the, I, I felt like she yeah. was referring to not her set, not like, like what did all of it, like she was only one part, but what did all yeah. of this, what did, like snapping your fingers, what did that, not accomplish, but what did that cost you? You know, like it's not, it wasn't about her is what I felt like. Yeah. And he said everything. And I don't, I don't know exactly what that meant. Yeah. Because obviously in the Infinity Gauntlet comic, 
the power is literally taken f- 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 from him. And there's that ironic ending where he's the one that wanted the power but doesn't have it and is now mm-hmm. this peasant-looking guy on this weird farm God knows where, yeah. you know. And Adam Warlock was the one that ended up with the power, but he didn't want it. Mm-hmm. He was that, like, dispassionate, twice yeah. removed from all humanity and life, but he now knows the secrets of the universe. Mm-hmm. So what did Thanos lo- lose then? Is he referring to something else? What's his goal now? It's this kind of goes back to like because that's ego's that's, that's goal the thing. in he, he, Guardians too. He accomplished his goal though. Yeah, yeah. Now what does he do? I mean, like he wanted to kill half the population. What what's next on his agenda? I mean, it's n- it's not even so much that he's um that, that like what is he gonna do next? But like what like mm-hmm. what did he lose to get where he is now? He lost purpose, maybe. P- yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so, like, that was that was something that kind of stood out to me, of just, like, what, mm-hmm. you know, what does this mean? Something is not right. Um, yeah, yeah. And going with the Secret War possible title, the idea of Secret War is that the Beyonder pulls a whole bunch of people from from the universe and just is like Mm -hmm. okay fight yep yep and that that's it that's the storyline and like there's it's not good guys versus bad guys it's like okay this side versus that side go it's like wait yeah magneto is on the same side as dr doom who's on the same side as peter parker who's on the same side as the x-men but over here the avengers and you know like (laughs) yeah it's like that I, i don't know so I literally just thought of this as we were talking. What if mm-hmm. secret, like, what if all of those people didn't die and it's the Beyonder or, or something huh. who just pulled all of these people out? Like, the, whatever Thanos did didn't actually work. Huh. And there there is this battle world, as they call it in, you know in secret wars and they have to like battle their way out of that and then get back to earth and finally clean up the mess that's interesting the only thing is that i feel like if marvel wanted to do secret war secret war seems like it would be more fun than what Infinity War was. Like, Secret War might seems like yeah, something they do in a couple years when they've got, like, sure. the 20th Century Fox stuff integrated. And it's like, Agreed okay, let's play with all our new toys together. Yeah, it's 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 the one that I don't know. It's like, okay, how would you make this the emotional yeah. payoff that we all want it to be? How is this going to be bigger mm-hmm. or better? You know, stuff like that. So, I, it's, it's a stretch. Probably unlikely. Um... But speculation. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. The way this movie went, like, it took so many turns that I could not see coming a continent away. Yeah. Like, they're they're going to pull stuff out for whatever this fourth movie is that nobody's going to see coming at all. Like, they sprung Red Skull on us. Like, who's next? Yeah. We're, we're going to get the Howling Commandos back. Ooh! wow (laughs) yeah yeah who knows dum dum dugan Um, (laughs) i don't know man this is lots lots of stuff is happening good film good very good yeah like great film one of the best for sure i will have to like see it again another couple times and let it sink in but yeah yeah, i'm very impressed i just bought myself movie pass so i'm hoping to get my (sighs) card for that soon and then go mm-hmm. back and watch it again because i yeah. mean it's only Ugh. been i mean it's it you you saw it l- l- last night i've i've had a whole yeah. like day and a half to like stew yeah on, you had a leg up on me on, on it yeah so i i and i'm still just like huh what the hell happened <laughs> yeah because like, cause like that was almost one, one of the things I didn't expect it. Like I at first was like, oh, they're going to end it with, with, with the snap. 
and like we're not gonna get to know and then then like more <gasps> details came out i was like nah that's not gonna happen they're actually gonna you know if if they're not mm-hmm. calling avengers 4 infinity war part 2 like they're gonna kind of wrap it up and yeah they said like we're gonna wrap this movie up and you like this like you can watch this film and that'll be it like you don't need to watch anything else and i mean d- d- yeah no, sure that's can't. absolutely not True, but in in the idea that it has an arc and the arc kind of com, com, completes, especially mm-hmm. f- from Thanos's p- perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he gets the stones, he does what he's gonna do, and that's it, done. Yeah. And so I, I think that's kind of what they meant of like, hey, it it is its own complete story. Mm-hmm. Um. But I I don't know, man. Next year cannot come soon enough yeah Ant- yeah Ant- ant-man and the yeah. wasp is also supposedly taking place before the events of this which yeah, i think I'm very is, intrigued about that too i think is the events of whatever war machine was like they're on a mission right now mm-hmm. like you know we, we can't reach them which at the same time is like what's more important <laughs> but we also yeah. don't know what their mission is you know maybe it has something yeah to and do. like the kind of quantum nonsense they get up to maybe they are like they physically cannot be able to help for whatever I mean, reason technically yes because what we kind of know of the film of that too they're searching for uh J- janet the original i think that they've yeah Jane janet hey P- yeah Pam's yeah wife. her name's janet um they're searching for her in the like micro ver like the sub you know so mm-hmm. that's the thing they might be indisposed or trapped there um but they yeah. but the way it sounded to me it sounded like hawkeye was with them no i yeah i think he said something like they've both they have taken themselves out both just as fathers well i yeah i cuz i the way it sounded to me is that they 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 yeah like they won't be available for this because they are on some other mission right now Mm -hmm. they are doing something else already um and yeah we don't know what hawkeye is up to yeah uh but i i kind of took that as oh they're together like hawkeye is we might see hawkeye show up in ant-man and the wasp Um, i'd like that a lot yeah which might be neat because i mean one of the classic things in the comics is hawkeye shooting an arrow with ant-man on top of it mm-hmm. which they did in civil uh-huh. war you know yeah um, so there'd be stuff like that but hawkeye also has like originally he was a bad guy and oh. hank pym is there well not hank but you, you, you know the ant-man is basically a criminal scott is yes. basically a, cr- a criminal yeah uh, yeah and so to see the criminals team up <laughs> oh, would be kind of cool. It <laughs> sounds lovely. I mean, I guess technically Captain America is a criminal too now, you know, but yeah. semantics. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I get the feeling that overall their movie won't play, like won't have a big impact on the overall universe. We'll just get to see what they were up to. Like, side note, you can also yeah. read Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is out this week. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think it will only give us dramatic irony and not any actual plot progress regarding or, the events of Infinity. Yeah, War. or he's going to, like, come out of the microverse after, like, half the people yeah. are dead and just be like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the post credit scene, like, when that van crashes into uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill and there's no driver, I thought, like, Ant-Man. oh, it's Scott and he's just very small. <laughs> I, I, yeah, because at first, at first I was like, oh, maybe the, at first I was like, oh, maybe this is time travel because this looks like the scene in Winter Soldier. Maybe this is it taking does. place in the pa- yeah. p- p- past. Um, and then the crash happens like, OK, it's playing out differently. No driver. Ant-Man. Yes. Awesome. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Cool. OK. No, I wasn't the only Maria, person who thought Maria that. Hill is evaporating. Uh, fuck. OK, this is happening now. Shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. I don't know. C- crazy stuff. One final thing. I don't know if they'll do it or not. I want to believe that they will do it. I have hope that they will do it. What's that? I never actually watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know where Coulson stands, but I would like, if he can't appear, a mention of Coulson 
in Avengers Four again, just to bookend it. Like Very back to possible. Um, yeah, I'm the not Shwarma Six and Nick Fury and Phil Coulson. I'm not up to date on Agents of Shield. I'm like a season and a half behind. Um, but yeah, Agent Coulson is alive. Uh, okay. he's he's out Good. there. Um, Good. And he's basically running Shield right now. Um, yes, Shield did go away in Civil or in uh, Winter Soldier, but then yeah. in the Agents of Shield thing, Nick Fury made an appearance and was like, "I'm leaving Shield to you. Rebuild it." Um, so he's been slowly doing that. But um, mm-hmm. we also it's also been confirmed that he will appear in the Captain Marvel film. Oh yes, yes! So we'll oh, get to of course see, he would. That's so exciting! It, yeah, it takes place before you know he died in of uh, Avengers. So yeah, Shield is it's good, but with a caveat. Mm-hmm. First season is terrible. That's what I've heard. That it, it had a shaky start. It gets better when the events of uh, the Winter Soldier hit. And it ties mm-hmm. in. But even then, it still has its ups and downs. It's like, okay, this is not as interesting or as good. Or like, oh, this one thing is really good. Like, this is sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Good film. Yeah. I'm excited yes. to see what happens next. I am mm-hmm. waiting on bated breath. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, well, that being said, I've mentioned a couple times, but our episode on Infinity Gauntlet, the comics that this movie is kind of based off of loosely, um, is out and available right now. You can go listen to that as a podcast or on YouTube uh, or on Spotify, wherever you would like to listen. So please go check that out. Read the book if you liked the m- movie. Um, go, you know, go see what the original had to say and then... Uh, Go check out more of our podcasts. That would be super helpful. Like, subscribe, share. Do whatever you got to do to help spread the word because that would be uh, super helpful to us. Um, If you liked this show, if you like any of our uh, other shows, please go support us on patreon.com slash the whatnots. You can sign up for as little as a dollar. And it's, it's basically pocket change, guys. And you can help us out a ton. Um, it, without your support, it's all coming out of our pockets. Um, and the more support we get, the bigger and better c- 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 content we can make for you guys. Um, but hey, if you just want to sit back, relax, and enjoy the yeah. show, that is A-OK too. Just have some fun, you know. Um, that being said, you can follow us on Twitter at the whatnots. All of our shows will be up there. We actually kind of j- just announced a new show. Uh, which will be out hopefully soon. It's called Questionable Commentary. Uh, And Eric Mannix, who was on the most recent episode of the review show on our Infinity Gauntlet episode, he is going to be co-hosting that show with uh, Jess. I believe her last name is pronounced Beaver, but I could be wrong and it could be Bever. I haven't actually asked her how to pronounce it yet, so (laughs) we'll see. And if she hears this, uh, she can correct me or I should just go ask her you know and actually be smart um, but they're they're gonna be doing a movie commentary podcast they already have a bunch of episodes in the can we're just working on finalizing details and getting our website up and stuff like that so everything can go smooth as possible I'm excited mm-hmm. you you mentioned you're like oh I'm I'm super excited about this new show it's gonna be sweet yeah yeah, I love commentaries, and there aren't enough podcasts that I've encountered that are done in an audio commentary format. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Um, where where can the listeners find you, Melissa? Uh, I am on Twitter at WilkyWit. That's W-I-K-W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. I never have to, like, say it out loud. I'm newer to <laughs> podcasting, so it's like, oh, I still have to get my patter down. Every time I do this. That's okay. And I screw I am, things up all the time. Yeah. And I am a cast member on the live play RPG podcast, The Lost Library, on the Grayscale storyline. And my first uh, actual playing episode should be coming up here pretty soon. Cool. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Uh, you can find me personally at Hush315 on Twitter. 
so yeah, go like, share, subscribe. Let us know what you thought of this movie. But you know, be careful of spoilers for other people who still haven't seen it. But uh, we hope you enjoy this. Uh, we don't know exactly when the next episode of the Reactor Core will be because this is one that we don't do regularly. Um, but I'm mm-hmm. assuming we're gonna do one for like Solo or something like that. Maybe Dead. Yeah, Pro- you'll probably see us again in like May. That. Yeah, you'll see us again eventually. Uh, but for now, thank you guys for listening, uh, and we will catch you next time. Adios, guys. Bye. Bye.